This video has been sponsored by Keeps. I know, I know, more TikTok recipes on the channel. Listen, I gave you guys a bunch of weeks off from these, and also my views are slipping a little bit, so right back to testing viral TikToks we go. At least for today's edition, we have a good one. We're gonna be testing out this delicious looking homemade Caesar dressing from Angie Mays, another incomprehensibly viral pasta recipe from Emily Mariko, and the recipes that I'm most excited to get into, Donato DiCaprio's sandwiches, AKA the aggressive Italian sandwich maker. Let me know down in the comments which TikToks you would like to see me take a crack at in the next video, but let's get right into this one. TikTok recipes are such an interesting case study because at first glance, they seem so simple and easy. The videos are so short after all, but for people like me, the prospects of remaking them can cause a bit of stress. You never really know how they're gonna turn out. But one thing that's helped me relieve a whole bunch of stress recently are my buddies over at Keeps. Over the years, my hair, and specifically my hairline, has been quite the point of contention for a lot of you out there. Let's just say there's more reasons than one that I elected to switch up the style a little bit, but I don't even think that'd be an option by now if it wasn't for these guys and my buddies over at Keeps. Keeps is a subscription service that helps men keep their hair. And if you related to me a little bit with the hair anxiety, do not feel alone because two out of three guys will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. But Keeps has got you covered because they offer clinically proven, research-backed treatments to stop hair loss and improve hair growth. They have a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals a reality. And my favorite part of Keeps is that you can get quality, expert care from the comfort of your own home. You never have to visit a doctor's office or a pharmacy. But still, all Keeps treatment plans are doctor recommended and delivered straight to your door, all at about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. We're talking an easy and comfortable sign up process and doctor interaction with cheaper, clinically proven products that are delivered straight to your door. I don't know how it can get any better than that. So to begin the journey of stopping your hair loss with Keeps, click the link in the top line of the description and go to keeps.com slash Seymour to get 50% off your first Keeps order. That is K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Seymour. And of course, thank you so much to Keeps for supporting the channel. But okay, back to the topic at hand. Donato DiCaprio or mildly angry Italian sandwich man, you are up first today. For his first creation, I grabbed the largest loaf of Italian bread I could find, some fresh mozzarella, very expensive prosciutto, and that's it. So if you've never seen any of Donato's TikToks before, this is the best way I can explain him to you. He's obviously a pro that does this for a living, he's very good at what he does, he's got great knife skills, but to much of the world, including myself, some of the portions of ingredients, as well as the choices with bread, are really kind of bizarre, it's things I've never seen before. The ratios of everything that he uses is kind of interesting, it's almost become like a fun game for everybody to guess if he's gonna tear out the top half of the bread, as you saw him do in this recipe video, and I'm gonna try to do the same. But I think the goal of this creation is to see if we're missing something here. Maybe we're being too critical, the outcome will be greater than the sum of its parts. So let's just give this a try before we pass any more judgment. There's not a whole lot else to say about this one. I feel like I'm in a cartoon, like, with an oversized sandwich that obviously doesn't fit in the character's mouth. It just took me two full minutes of recording time to finish that bite. Um, obviously everything that's going on here is good, individually. But overall, this thing is drier than the desert. Our breads are obviously different. The ratios that we use could be a little bit different too, but I don't think that much. Call it my Americanized taste all you want, but I'd rather just deconstruct this and eat them all separately. If you have to keep them together, there's gotta be something else going on there. Some kind of moisture, a pesto, a mayo. The moisture from the mozzarella is just not enough, I don't think. This prosciutto is delicious though. But yeah, nothing too profound was discovered with this one, but I'm not ready to give up on this guy quite yet. It's rare that I do multiple recipes from the same person in the same video, but I think Donato deserves another shot. For his second sandwich, I grabbed some olive oil and basil, Parmesan cheese and buffalo mozzarella, a slightly less crusty bread and more prosciutto, fresh garlic, salt and pepper, and then a zucchini because I'm a moron and forgot to include it in that first shot. And while it's on the cutting board already, let's just prep it and get it out of the way. 
I'm just gonna slice this into some long thin strips, coat it in olive oil, some salt and pepper, and then lay it down in my grill pan to get some nice grill marks. In addition to that, we are also whipping up a homemade nut-free pesto for this, as well as subbing in some much fresher buffalo mozzarella for this, and a more palatable, potentially better, Italian roll that might lend itself better to a sandwich application. I was considering not saying this, but who cares? I'm just gonna come clean here. Have any of you out there ever sent me one of this guy's videos to recreate? Honestly, no. I've just been obsessed with watching his videos. Every time he pops up on my For You page, I watch the whole thing in absolute awe. I think I just love how he works with seemingly reckless abandon with the knife and all the ingredients. It always seems like he's just kind of winging it and deciding what to put and what shape to cut the bread in as he goes. And on top of that, he's blown up as fast as any food creator on TikTok in recent history. The guy's got two million followers in a matter of months. It's definitely not just me that's weirdly obsessed with his videos. But once again, we have arrived at sandwich assembly. I have to resist the Caucasian American urge to lather mayo on this because all this is getting is some more prosciutto, plenty of that fresh buffalo mozzarella, some of our grilled zucchini, and topped with the fresh homemade pesto. You could say that I am slightly more eager to bite into this one, so let's give it a shot. Mmm. Now we are talking. This is so good. So much better than the last one. Honestly, that last one was like biting into a leather boot, but I was trying to be a little nicer, but oh well. He has redeemed himself. This is delicious. I actually have to stop myself before I ate the whole half uh, so I can review this. Did he invent this combination of ingredients? No. Uh, but has he inspired people like me, a bunch of others, to recreate it? Yeah, I would say so. The bread is obviously much softer, much easier to eat. I love the additions of the zucchini and pesto. It adds so much flavor, brightness, and obviously moisture. But honestly, I'm kind of eating my own words here because with this fresh, super moist mozzarella, the buffalo mozzarella, that makes a world of a difference too. All that whey just dripping down into the bread kind of acts as its own condiment. So should I have used this in the last one? Yes, would it have saved the whole thing? Maybe not. Either way, absolutely delicious. I will be consuming this whole thing for lunch. Donato, keep doing your thing. I love your videos. Next up today, we've got Emily Mariko back on the channel to show us her lemon parmesan pasta. And you'll need some bucatini pasta and salt, some butter and parmesan, a few fresh lemons, and a few obligatory, unsettling stares directly into the camera. Now, while there does exist many pasta dishes that are extremely simple with a few ingredients like this, you have your carbonaras, your cacio e pepes, this one, not familiar with. At least with this one, I can say that a whole swath of you have sent me this, you wanna see me remake it. If you weren't around for the last Emily Mariko craze, the salmon rice bowl that got 50 million views, but this is as simple as massaging and chopping your lemons, dicing up the butter, cooking off the pasta, and then combining it all. I'm assuming, hopefully getting an emulsion between the butter, the pasta water, and the lemon juice. But really, it's anybody's guess when it comes to her recipes. And also, ignore the glove on my hand that may or may not be protecting the cut on my finger that I just got while chopping the lemons. And I'm now trying to shield from the lemon juice getting in there and making me scream like, Anybody that sees me as soon as I wake up in the morning. And now, of course, the elephant in this TikTok, for some godless reason, she includes the juiced lemon halves, both in the pot of pasta and then as some weird demented garnish at the end. I will bluntly tell you right now, this adds nothing to a pasta dish unless you like the look of mushed lemons. But if you must include them like I felt the need to, just make sure you thoroughly wash these because the exterior of your lemons and all your produce is pretty disgusting. God knows how many dirty fingers have touched these things in the grocery store, which is also why you shouldn't use lemon wedges in restaurants. But this four ingredient pasta creation is complete, so let's give it a shot. If I was just cooking this on my own time, uh, I would definitely feel the need to add some kind of greens, some parsley or something. Uh, but overall, this looks pretty good. As expected, this is 
fine. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing offensive about it. You taste the lemon and the cheese and a little butter, but beyond that, not a whole lot going on. I feel like this would be a really good base to build upon. I feel like any protein thrown on top of this would be great. Any herbs, like I said, some fried sage maybe. I do feel like it's screaming for some black pepper for some reason, because it could use it. But beyond that, nothing earth shattering, groundbreaking. I probably won't remember this uh, come tomorrow morning, but at least it's another Emily Mariko classic in the books. And lastly today, to cleanse our palates and souls a little bit, we've got this wholesome, delicious looking Caesar dressing from Angie Mays. You'll need some red wine vinegar and Worcestershire sauce, some capers and fresh garlic, extra virgin olive oil, romaine lettuce and fresh parm, Dijon mustard, some anchovies, Tabasco sauce, a lemon, an egg, and salt and pepper. What a welcomed sight it is to see some greenery, some lettuce on the channel for once. I feel like it's been months, if not years, since we have made something as simple and not quite as artery clogging as a salad. Although the majority of the time that you order salads, especially in restaurants like this, they have more calories in them than the average burger or pasta with all that dressing. So is this really better for us? Probably not. Now besides this TikTok getting over 13 million views in less than a week, what drew me to this video was the table side aspect of this. I'm pretty sure this is done in a restaurant. And I'm such a sucker when it comes to stuff like this. I love a sizzling fajita plate or a table side pasta or a homemade Caesar dressing like this where everything comes together in one bowl, especially in an old and rustic and ratty and bacteria infested wooden bowl like they use in the video. Adding just that extra little something when it comes to the flavor and flair of this. I did my best to eyeball each ingredient and try to match the video to use those forks and try to mash the solids down and mix everything together. For a while there, I felt like I was making no progress using just purely forks. I was very tempted to pull this all out and throw it in a damn blender. It's a lot more work than it seems to finally mash up garlic and capers with a few old dull forks. And by the way, if any of you out there are kind of horrified by the ingredients that go into Caesar dressing, please leave a comment and let me know. Caesar dressing has always been my favorite for salads and a bunch of other stuff, but I vividly remember in middle school when I found out what goes into this stuff. It seems like such a gnarly combination of anchovies and garlic and hot sauce. It seems like it should be the number one food that nobody will order on a date or if you're planning on talking to anybody within a mile radius of them. But people still do, as will I, forever, because it's delicious. And by the end of this one, it was looking good enough to be stabbed 23 times over to get a taste. Kind of a lame joke, but I do appreciate you if you got that. But let's just give this one a try. I can't remember the last time I have felt any amount of excitement to eat a salad, uh, much less to the degree I'm feeling right now. So the first hit of this is very good. It's very Caesary, it's very savory and tasty. But my biggest complaint has to be that I wasn't able to get all the individual ingredients broken down enough and melded into one. I fully get the appeal of the table side Caesar idea in a restaurant by somebody who does it all day and has got all the proportions mastered. But for somebody like me at home who has never done it, maybe not the most practical application. Uh, I'd say just throw it all in a food processor if you have one. It would save you time, it would save you sweat, potentially dripping down your forehead, maybe into the salad and adding a little extra flavor. But still, with all that being said, probably one of the best Caesars I've ever eaten. And with a little bit of tweaking, it definitely would be the best. I just burped straight up fishy anchovy. Ugh. Oh. 